The SNP failed to get their majority, so Boris Johnson rejects the second Scottish referendum and Nicola Sturgeon prepares to take Boris to court. For this to end up in court, which is not something I ever want to see, it would mean that a Conservative government had refused to respect the democratic wishes of the Scottish people and the outcome of a democratic election. Which wouldn't and play tried well. And to, tried to go to the Supreme Court to overturn Scottish democracy. I think it is an understatement to say that that wouldn't play well, but it would also... So say Hello everyone and welcome to the first programme of the day. What an interesting last few days we've had since Thursday, since the voting started. Now we've uh, had the full result, especially in Scotland. Nicola Sturgeon's SNP failed to get a majority that they were desperate to get. Now, Alex Salmond as leader was much better at performing during elections than Nicola Sturgeon. This is the second election that Sturgeon failed to get what she actually wanted. So Boris Johnson, the Prime Minister, had come out to actually say, well, you cannot have your second Scottish referendum because you don't have a mandate. Sturgeon is saying that we do have a mandate because the majority voted for pro-independent parties. Now, there is a problem here because that's not how elections work. Secondly, a uh, big chunk of those votes went to the Scottish Greens. Now, the Green Party also wants independence, but a lot of young people who vote for the Green Party don't vote for that reason. There are a number of other uh, policies that they like from uh, the communists that are called the Greens. Now, uh, Nicola Surgeon is very concerned about her plan because she actually, at this point, wants to could ideally introduce a second Scottish referendum by spring 2022. Do you know why? Because she has a plan for recovery in Scotland. And apparently her plan is quite different to Boris Johnson's recovery plan. And I'm going to show you this clip because it makes absolutely no sense because both uh, senior ministers of uh, the UK government and uh, Scottish government are talking about the economic recovery. But apparently the problem here is that the SNP administration have a different type of recovery than Downing Street. Any but the legislation could COVID. land in the Scottish Parliament early next year. I wouldn't rule that out, but equally I'm not okay. sitting here right now right. and saying that that is the time scale. The, the people of Scotland uh, elected me, re-elected me as First Minister mm. with the first task of continuing to steer us through this pandemic, getting us into recovery. Then, of course, there is a question about what kind of recovery do we want? What kind of country are we rebuilding well, to? And that brings into sharp focus. Where do decisions lie? I'm not sure the kind of recovery, recovery that Boris Johnson envisages is, uh, is one that a majority of people in Scotland would support. What, what is that? I'm very confused here because any recovery that politicians and governments, regardless of if they're centre-right or centre-left or centre or up and down, focus on, generally speaking, we're talking about um, the economy, employment and the standards of living and in, generally speaking you know we're not talking about recovery for the rich because the rich and the uh, corporations always find a way to survive even during crises they're talking about the ordinary people out there who have lost their jobs and businesses now Nicola Sturgeon says that her plan her priority for this recovery is different to Boris Johnson's considering Boris Johnson's plan and I don't really agree with some of the policies coming from Downing Street uh, he plans to actually um, have the recovery for the whole country. Now, I'm guessing Nicola Sturgeon wants to do, do some sort of discriminatory policy program, which will focus on only certain groups of people in Scotland. I'm just, you know, speculating. Otherwise, I have no idea what she means by a different kind of recovery. Now, she's currently dealing with this potential court case that hasn't even, I mean, I don't understand why this should even be an option for either side. Now, Michael Gove has come out to confirm that the government's position is that Nicola Sturgeon cannot introduce any referendums because there is no mandate. She doesn't have a majority. You know, one of the things to bear in mind is that while Nicola Sturgeon uh, uh, obviously secured a good result, the SNP did not get a majority in this election, as they did um, in 2011. Uh, in 2011, the, the, the SNP under uh, Alex Hammond got a majority, a, a referendum then followed. It's important to remember that at that time, every party in the Scottish Parliament thought that it was appropriate to hold a referendum then. The SNP did not get a majority in this election and also... Yes, well, as you know, I'm not Michael Gove's biggest fan. I disagree with a lot of ideas that this guy has, but he was spot on here. When we talk about the 2014 Scottish referendum and after the election that they had in 2011, it wasn't just the fact that the SNP and Alex Salmond had a majority. It was because at the time, the appetite, politically speaking, in Scotland were that all parties were in favour of a referendum to actually sort out this situation. 
All of them supported it, including the Labour Party and the Conservatives at the time, supported the idea uh, to ensure that we can actually have a civilised debate, have a vote, and see where we are. And we did vote. People in Scotland voted. And they voted, no, no and they, they, they said we're going to stay in the UK. Somehow, Nicola Sturgeon never gave up, and this is why um, Michael Gove is absolutely spot on on this issue. Now, of course, the Prime Minister is ready for any potential court case, and uh, he's right to immediately reject the idea of a referendum before you allow Nicola Sturgeon to create any momentum. Because now that she has technically won the election, but without the majority, she can actually go out there and start a, a actual street campaign uh, for, uh, over the next year uh, to gather a lot of support from various sides. The people who voted for the Green Party could actually go and back Nicola Sturgeon's campaign. The issue is that is that actually a majority of Scots. It's not. We know that. And a lot of people who every now and then back independence in Scotland, they don't really do that. They, they usually do it when they're angry at uh, Westminster and Boris Johnson. That's always been clear in the opinion polls. And this is why Boris Johnson is smart to know this. Paul Brand from ITV has been reporting the idea that Nicola Sturgeon has uh, to go ahead with this legislation for a second referendum. And if the Prime Minister says no, that she will actually go to Supreme Court uh, and then we'll see if he can stop her there. Now, uh, Paul Brown actually talks about uh, the SNP's uh, strategy for a second referendum, which involved a strong international dimension. So Nicola Surgeon now hopes to actually uh, get the support of various countries, especially in the European Union, so that they could embarrass Boris Johnson uh, into respecting the SNP's mandate. Now, apparently, we have to expect to see the SNP ministers flying to foreign capitals in the coming months. Okay, this is the same group of politicians who are still telling people to stay at home, but yet they want to freely go around, travel around the world uh, to beg the presidents and prime ministers to embarrass Boris Johnson into accepting the second Scottish referendum. That is their priority. Now, Paul Brand rightly actually points out that it's quite tricky, this situation, because on the one hand, would other EU nations who have separatist movements of their own support Scotland's bid uh, for independence? Yeah, what about the Spanish government and the Catalonia issue? What about all the others, even Italy? The division that we're currently seeing in North and South and a number of movements, the Eurosceptic movements in France and Italy and other places as well. You really think these countries are just going to be backing Scotland for no reason. That's one issue. Secondly, uh, would a Scotland wishing to rejoin the European Union be seen as a major PR boon after the painful process of UK leaving? That's another good point. After everything that's been happening since 2016, do you really think, um, especially with the state of uh, the budgets and uh, well, politics in general in Scotland, I don't think the European Union nations will see Nicola Sturgeon's SNP as an attractive new ally. I don't think they know this in the SNP, but we can see that the European Union are not really welcoming them at this point. Now, uh, Paul Brand says that suspect a major outreach will begin with Scandinavian countries, of course, and they are a lot closer to Scotland, a number of issues, especially politically, not just geographically, uh, and larger EU nations will be harder to lobby. But the SNP has ambitions of wooing Germany. Sure. I mean, if you can manage to do that, that will be quite impressive, but it's not going to happen uh, considering we have a lot of problems inside the European Union, between Germany and France, between Spain and Portugal, between Greece and Turkey, who is still technically part of the customs union. There are a number of issues. And the Scotland, uh, well, the Queen of Scotland, Queen Nicola, is still thinking that she's so popular uh, around Europe that everybody will say yes to her. On this channel, we will keep you guys posted because the next few days will be interesting to see the reactions from Westminster and across Scotland. A uh, special thank you to all the members of the channel. We sent out uh, today's, uh, this week's latest edition of our weekly newsletters. Uh, so make sure if you haven't seen, if you actually signed up, check out your uh, inbox or check out your spam folder just in case. If you're a member, you haven't signed up yet, go on the community page on YouTube and sign up to our newsletters for free. If you're not a member of the channel, then become a member and you get access to our free weekly newsletters and a number of other things. Check out the link in the description or find the join button next to subscribe. I'm Maya Tusi, and I'll see you guys in the next video.